Hello, welcome to Chandwell. It's been four years since I first introduced Chandwell. So today, I thought it was about time I did it again. So whether you've been watching for four years or four seconds, welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building an N-gauge layout set in a rundown West Yorkshire town in 1993. Chandwell occupies two walls of my home office, which is actually my house's internal garage. It sits on top of cabinets built by a local joiner for just this purpose, which makes the overall look quite neat. There is a four-track mainline station at this end, and the tracks curve along a city centre viaduct, cross the River Chander, and then split away into two tunnels underneath Baker's Hill, and onwards to nicer places. The layout is 47 centimetres deep on this side and stretches two and a half metres along the back wall. The baseboard on the other wall is narrower, it is 36 centimetres deep. This was as wide as it could be for me to still have access to my desk. There is a scenic section one and a half metres long, followed on the other side of the back scene by a one metre long fiddle yard. The fiddle yard uses a cassette system with the cassettes made from B&Q cable trunking and bits of copper tape. The longest cassette can just about fit a loco and five coaches. Sadly, it doesn't quite hold my five car HST, so any off-scene shuffling of that is a bit of a pain. The layout of the track is very much based on that of Bradford Interchange before its most recent modifications. The combination of crossovers and points means that trains can enter from either of the two tunnels and access any of the platforms, and the same in the other direction. Simultaneous arrivals and departures are possible, and it is common to see two trains arriving or departing side by side in Chandwell, just like it is in Bradford. The whole layout is curved, which means that even should a train need to cross from the rearmost track to the frontmost, there are no reverse curves. When I started making Chandwell, I wanted to wire it as a traditional DC layout, just as my granddad would have used over 35 years ago. I went all in with 17 separate sections wired for cab control. This means that any combination of arrival and departure is possible using the two plug-in handheld controllers. I drew the control panel myself in the free software Inkscape and included switches for the main sections, isolating segments and point control. As it happens, it turned out that I don't really enjoy wiring and I enjoy spending money even less, so the point motors never materialised and never will. The layout's wiring is glued to the back of the cabinets and sold at a tag strip with droppers from the tracks. It was a pain to set up, but it's not failed me in over four years. I took care to meticulously label every wiring point and document it in my layout's wiring book. Every wire is therefore identifiable from track to control panel and back again, should I ever need it. I soon realised that the track, wiring, control panel and even the trains paled into almost insignificance when I learned just how much I loved making buildings from card. Starting with the modified scale scenes kit as TNC Bakery and the discovery of the software Inkscape, I was hooked. I built the tunnel mouths, viaduct, skew arches, Rosebeck bridge and retaining walls in the first year. The track is on a couple of layers of 3mm plywood and it's glued directly to the cardboard viaduct arches. The rest of the buildings have followed, and I've worked on them almost every day for over two years. Every building is drawn in the free application Inkscape, then hand cut and built from card, with glazing made from waste food packaging acetate. Each one is based on a real example in and around Bradford. The Midland Hotel, the new Beehive, the old register office, are all in Bradford. The Crescent is in Ilkley. Sorby Bridge gives Chandwell its town hall. The spectacularly awful fluid nightclub in Shipley. Spartan Works is in Sheffield. And the old bridge crosses the wharf in Otley. These buildings are around North Parade in Bradford. And the station is a mix of Sheffield, Chester and Ilkley. Anyone who's seen the real thing needs no hint as to where the market tower comes from. I build cheaply. I use cheap or free materials and I avoid wherever possible using anything that I need to pay for. 
sometimes this comes at the expense of fine scale detail. My chopped up cocktail stick chimney pots are a disgrace and my folded bits of paper downspouts are lumpy. My hand cut cheesecake wrapping fire escapes really don't bear close inspection. But it's broad brush atmosphere I am after and I think I've managed that quite well. I do use the occasional laser cut card parts such as the lovely Juliet balcony railings and a pile of sleepers, both from scale model scenery. But these are the exceptions that give a final bit of polish to these parts of the layout. So this is Chandwell. It's a major market town in West Yorkshire, sitting on a loop of the River Chander at the lower end of Chanderdale, to the west of Wharfdale and Airedale. The town is served by a four-platform terminus station with a curved viaduct taking two main lines through the tunnels of Baker's Hill to Halifax and Huddersfield and Leeds and Bradford. A branch line to the Chandwell Goods Yards and Upper Chanderdale via Chandfield was closed in the early 1950s. The viaduct that carried the branch line was partially demolished in 1960 and the new indoor market, precinct and market tower were built as a brave, forward-looking modernist statement in concrete and brick. In present day 1993, Chandwell has fallen on hard times after a long period of decline. But please look out for the next update from Chandwell's favourite celebrity, Brittany Scroggins. Join me, Brittany Scroggins, in May, and I'll be taking you on a tour of the nightlife of Chandwell and showing you everything that this wonderful town has to offer. Chandwell, it's not as grim as you think it is. I can't wait to see what Brittany has to say in her next Visit Chandwell Tourist Board film. Look how far the layout has come in four years. He's the first version of this video, nervously recorded four years ago. If you've enjoyed this introduction, please press the thumbs up button for me. Let's see if I can get ten times as many thumbs up on this video that I got on that first one. Until next time then, thank you for watching. Take care. And I'll see you then.